Hey, what's going on everybody? Welcome to the channel. If you happen to be new, uh, thank you for stopping by and for everybody else, welcome back. About a year ago, we picked up a wild type axolotl, built this epic enclosure for it. That led to us picking up a more rare type axolotl later on. And today's video is going to be all about this rare axolotl and, well, his new little friend. We ended up picking up this axolotl as a part of all of our fish that we got for the new pool pond. So let's go ahead and get into this video today. Oh my goodness, guys, we have something in the car that we have picked up and you are not going to want to miss this. So if you haven't subscribed, make sure you do. Make sure you turn on that notification bell. We are going to get this thing inside right now and we're going to introduce you to our new little baby. Who remembers Axolotl Rose? Axolotl Rose right here is my Axolotl. And in a recent video, somebody informed me to stop calling him a girl because it is actually a he. So it is a male and I guess you can tell based on on the fact that he has testicles which is fine but today we got axolotl rose a little girlfriend and before we get axolotl rose's girlfriend in here we're gonna have to let her temperature acclimate for a minute because she's been in the car and i am telling you now it has taken me a long time to find a female to pair up with axolotl rose now before we get axolotl rose's little girlfriend in here we need to first add some plants so if you notice a lot of these java ferns that i've put in here have actually died off and that is just simply because these things are actually grown immersed instead of submerged so they drop all of their immersed leaves to regrow submerged leaves and if you notice we have new leaf growth right there if you notice right there that's a baby java fern growing on that leaf there is a baby java fern growing on the bottom of that leaf so a lot of these leaves actually have babies growing on them this one has some new growth on it as well but we need to get something in here for egg laying one of the great plants that we sell at freshwaterscrub.com that'll be great for egg laying of axolotls is hornwort and hornwort makes a great hide for baby fry axolotl eggs fish eggs in general what i'm trying to do is break all this duckweed away from it let the duckweed float to the top and then we'll let this hornwort go. So this hornwort will grow fantastic in here. Well now, all we have to do is introduce little Axolotl Rose to his girlfriend. Guys, do you see what I see? That is a glow in the dark Axolotl. What in the what? and axolotl rose and that little girl are, oh my gosh oh my gosh axolotl rose almost straight murked that guppy four to six weeks later all right guys well it's been about a month since we put this new axolotl into the enclosure with a little axolotl rose and honestly we weren't overly sure of the age of this particular axolotl and obviously had no clue whether she was sexually mature or not so interestingly enough I was checking the enclosure and noticed some bumps growing under the tail and this is how you kind of sex them as they are sexually mature the male will have these lumps behind the tail which is how people had identified that axolotl rose was actually a male so i start seeing these bumps and i'm thinking okay great we've gotten another male so you know i go to take a closer look and actually this is what i found let's go take a look well this is our little female axolotl and she really needs a name so make sure you comment below and let us know what we should name her but when I was talking about the bumps behind the tail, it's actually right at the base of the tail behind the legs. And you can see that right here. This little bump started to show up and I really thought, oh my gosh, we have another male. But as I looked closer, this is what I found. This happens to be a set of axolotl eggs that this little girl here has laid. Well, let's talk about the whole mating process with axolotls. I did not capture this actual part of the mating process, so I borrowed this footage from Southern Axolotls YouTube channel. 
Essentially what happens is, is the male will lead the female around the aquarium just like this, dropping deposits on the substrate. Then the female will actually walk over top of that deposit and actually pull that up and fertilize the eggs. This will happen over the course of about an hour. Within 12 to 72 hours after the mating occurs, the female will begin to lay her eggs. She's going to lay those eggs anywhere she can. If you make plants available, she will lay them all over the plant. What you'll see here is her walk up to the plant, grab a hold of the leaf of the plant, wrap her legs around it, and then she will deposit eggs directly on to the plant leaf. As she pulls away, she leaves an egg completely encased in a membrane that provides protection to the egg itself. The female could deposit upwards of 1,500 eggs within the aquarium, all over the plants, the rocks, the sponge filter, and any surface that she has access to. You'll want to let her completely finish laying eggs before you begin the removal process. So as we wait for her to complete her egg laying, let's go ahead and get this setup completed that we're going to use for hatching these axolotl eggs. We'll be using two small plastic bins to grow out these axolotl eggs. We'll go ahead and fill these with tap water and we'll want to, of course, dechlorinate and we're going to use our favorite product, API Aqua Essential. I will stress to you, API makes a product called Stress Coat Plus. You will not want to use that as it contains aloe in the solution and it is not good for axolotls, whereas the API Aqua Essential is fully safe and is a great product for you to dechlorinate your water. Now we're gonna go ahead and get some aeration set up. Some people say you need it, some people don't. I'd like to know your thoughts in the comments, but this is gonna be a pretty simple setup. We have a line coming into a check valve, into a two-way splitter, and then into two pieces of airline hose. I would like to tell you that when you cut your airline hose and you're using a standard splitter, you wanna make sure that every piece coming off this splitter are identical in length because air, very much like electricity, will take the path of least resistance. Meaning that if one of the hoses is shorter than the other, the shorter hose is actually gonna get the air, whereas the longer hose will not, causing you all kinds of problems. If you're using some sort of a valve system, you can actually adjust each line accordingly and make sure you get equal amounts of air through each hose. So let's go ahead and hook this up to an aerator and make sure that we have proper airflow. As you can see, as I put both ends of the hose into the water, they are both bubbling. Whereas if I take one of them out of the water, it will actually stop working. That is because I've removed the resistance from one of the hoses, meaning the one that was out of the water has the path of least resistance, meaning all of the air is escaping through that side. So all is good here. Let's get some sponge filters hooked up. We sell these sponge filters at freshwaterscrub.com. Make sure you use the code axolotl for 10% off all your orders until 7-10 of 22. We like these sponge filters because you can fully articulate the sponges on them depending on how your tank setup is and they suction cup right to the side of the tank. They're super easy to set up, super easy to maintain, and they work perfect in little setups like this. So make sure you go pick some of them up. And now that we have our sponge filter set up, it's time to go and retrieve all of these eggs. We're gonna start by retrieving the entire sponge off of the sponge filter that is covered in eggs because that automatically will cycle each of these tubs fully with the beneficial bacteria that is housed in those sponges. Now I'm being gentle removing this sponge, but just so you know, these eggs are protected by a membrane that completely circles it. As you can see, there are many eggs right here on this sponge. We'll go ahead and just slide this right onto the sponge filter in this first setup. And like I said, this will immediately cycle this setup. Let's go ahead and get this second sponge for the second setup, which also has a ton of eggs on it as well.
And now let's go ahead and start getting the plants that have eggs on them. We'll go ahead and move the plants from this setup over into these tubs. I spent about an hour finding every single egg that was in this setup. And people will probably ask, well, why didn't you just remove the parents? And that's a great question. And the reason is, is I did not have a setup ready for the parents to be moved because honestly, I didn't expect these guys to breed so fast. I was able to get every last egg out of the setup and we separated those equally amongst our two plastic bins. And in these bins, we wanna keep the water on the higher end of the range for axolotls. So about 70 to 72 degrees. This will allow these eggs to hatch within about 14 to 15 days. Now that we have all the eggs separated into their bins, we wanted to go ahead and add some new plants. And all of these plants are available at freshwaterscrub.com. We added some java fern as well as some hornwort. It's been a few days since we actually put these eggs in there. I wanna show you a time lapse real quick and this was actually filmed today, July the 1st, the day that this is coming out. And I wanna show you the movement inside of these eggs of these baby axolotls. You can actually see the gills starting to grow on the babies themselves. It's super cool as you can see right here. All right guys, well as this is called Breeding Axolotls for Profit, I wanted to talk about how you can profit off of raising baby axolotls. I currently have a buyer for all of these babies, the ones that do survive. There is going to be some culling that happens, as well as it is not expected that every single one will actually survive. As of right now, I have counted a total of 87 eggs and about 65-ish that I I can tell as of right now are actually fertile and are growing baby axolotls. I don't know how many of those will actually come out, but as of today, right now, I have a buyer for all 60 plus baby axolotls if they all survive at around $30 a piece. It'll take two to three months before they're ready to go to this person, but overall, this has been a really fun project, guys, and I wanted to make sure that I included everything in here. The only thing that's not included in this video is the actual hatching of the eggs which I will do another video those eggs are expected to hatch so they've been in their tubs right now for about five days we have about 10 more days before they should start hatching we'll keep a close eye on that we'll make sure we put out a video showing you the hatching process and how we actually raise these babies and feed them and everything else so that'll be coming in another video later on but with that guys hopefully you went on to enjoy this video Maybe Make sure you visit freshwaterscrub.com. Use the code axolotl for 10% off all your orders. Follow us on Facebook and Instagram. Links to both are down below. Thank you so very much. We are truly grateful for each and every single one of you. And hey, we will see you next time.